The last conversation that I ever had with my mother, my mom, took place in November 1984 when I was 18 years old. You see, when I was 15, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. And throughout my high school years, and as I left for college, she fought a valiant battle against the disease. But soon after I moved away, we saw that turn that so many people see who care for someone who is fighting a battle with a disease like cancer. And I came home every weekend so that I could be there to help my dad and, and to hold her hand. And this one day in November, my father was out of the house and I was sitting with her and she was holding my hand and she opened her eyes. She hadn't spoken much in the previous few weeks. And she looked me in the eye. She motioned for me to come closer and she said, would you trade me? And I was like, what? Surely I had heard her wrong. There was no way she had just asked me the words that I thought she had asked me. So I said, mom, mom, what did you say? And clear as a bell, she looked me in the eye and said, would you trade me for a mother who would live longer? Why would somebody ask that? I got angry, I started to cry, I was mad at her. I stood up, I said, why would you ask me that? Of course I would never trade you for someone who would live longer. And she said, if you wouldn't trade me for a mother who would be here longer, then we have to talk about what is about to happen. Because you see, she was very concerned that this incident that was inevitable could have a very negative impact on the rest of my life. And we spent the next 15 minutes talking about, talking about what it would be to be 18 years old and to lose her. We talked about the life ahead, the dreams she had for me. We talked about an amazing career. We talked about a marriage and a wife and a family and what my life could be over the next 70 years. You see, it must have sucked to be 58 years old and know that you were going to die any day. But in that moment, Betty Singer knew her purpose. She knew that in that moment, she was the parent of an 18-year-old who was about to lose their mother. And she knew there were some words that had to be said. And we talked, and we really connected, and we talked about the fact that there could be no regrets in the life she wanted me to live. But think about the world we live in today. Think about how everybody's looking for shortcuts. Everybody wants to streamline their communication. They want to tweet it once and have it go to Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. They want to be able to share things uh, the same. They memorize elevator pitches. They spend so much time working to get that elevator pitch down so that when they meet somebody, they can flick, just flick a switch in their back and go, hi, my name's Tom Singer. I've written 11 books. I speak all over the country, blah, blah, blah. Just verbal vomit that's pre-rehearsed onto every single person that they meet. But you see, I didn't realize it at the time. But what my mother was teaching me, by example, was that every person that you talk to is different. You can't systematize human relationships. You have to know, you have to know your purpose every time you have a conversation with somebody. And that's what she did in that final week. Every conversation she had with my dad, with her sisters, with her best friend, with my brothers, each conversation was unique. And each conversation had purpose. So I challenge you as you go forward about your day, your month, your year, the rest of your life, I challenge you not to try to systematize ways to make one size fit all, but I challenge you to think, what is my purpose when I talk to this person? And is it different when I talk to him? or to her. Because you see, when you know your purpose in every conversation, when you're able to connect with that person with what they need from you in that moment, you leave a legacy. Because if my mom had held my hand that November day and looked me in the eye and said, sweetheart, I love you, it wouldn't have changed how I felt about that woman one bit. But because she knew her purpose, I'm telling you this story 30 years later. When you speak to people with purpose, you leave a legacy. Thank you. Thank you.